If you will, ladies and gentlemen, it would be an honor for me to introduce to you my Class 377 Enhancement Pack, which is now available for you to enjoy at no cost. Oh yes, <laughs> why that is splendid. We here at Great British Railworks are working on a new Electro Star Pack. Which will have all versions of the Electro Star, even the Class 387, <laughs> and will be available soon, free of charge. <laughs> <laughs> we must collaborate, dear. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, don't forget about my Electro Star model, a brand new one, I must say, it's looking splendid. <laughs> 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 Looked crap. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Armhouse Power Stalks have released the long anticipated Class 377 and 375 Enhancement Pack, probably at the worst time. Obviously, a few weeks prior to the first post, we were given a teaser of what their next Enhancement Pack was going to be, and instantly we thought it was going to be the Class 360. But psych! It was this. As opposed to a new 166 or. I'm kidding. So. How much is this great pack selling for then? <laughs> well, it's time to see whether this pack is worth all your pennies. And mind you, since I'm very familiar with Electro Stars, I'm going to be super critical. Roll the intro, Gary! <laughs> Gary, the soundtracks are messed up. Sort them out, please. God's sake. So, what liveries do you get with this fantastic pack? <coughs> and that's what I think about all those liveries. Good night. <laughs> yeah, well, to be honest, none of those liveries look that great. The Savon looks too pale and resembles more of this train, and the Southeastern Blue and FCC liveries just don't look that convincing. The colours are all over the place. The only accurate liveries are the Southeastern White ones. But Ruth is wrong. Plus, Richard, I think you forgot to pick this one up from school. Not a problem, though, because I'm pretty sure someone else will do that for you instead. What a terrible parent. <laughs> At least we get a whole new pattern of you, courtesy of Sir Guter Barnhoff, the first. The only issue is they missed out this interior, which actually applies to this livery. But instead, you get. Oh well, besides the errors, I still have to give credit for the amazing work done here. Looking at the other visuals, unlike Dovetail's efforts to model the original headlight configurations correctly, they were indeed attempted again, courtesy of Sir Guter Barnhoff, the first. And even though they may look a lot more accurate, <laughs> it's still wrong. If we focus on this real life image here, you can clearly see how the head and tail lights are closer together, but compared to the enhancement pack models, the space between the lights is a lot bigger. And as much as I tried to address this problem, of course some f had to cry over it. I mean, I appreciate the effort put in, but it could have been improved. Now, how many fanboys have their fingers ready to type, be grateful for what you get? Shut up. Plums. Also, courtesy of Guter Barnhoff, he has actually modelled the destination displays as accurately as possible, fit with both scrolling and non-scrolling destinations, which is a very nice touch. The only major problem I have is... There aren't enough. This actually annoys me too, because even though AP provided a broad selection of destinations, how could they miss out the joint ones? You know, for example, are you trying to search for the correct destination for a port of harbour and bug Norwegian service to add in your scenario? Well, it's not there. Why? Did you know that some trains display two places at once on the destination screens? What about this one? I can't find a picture of it, but yes, some trains do show that. I guess it's not a major problem though, but I don't see why it wasn't added in the first place.
it gets worse. Excuse me sir, it seems you've labelled this train as a 377-2, though it's a dash 5. Actually no, it's the same for every other livery. Also, with some variants, this top headlight should be square. I'm sorry, is this really £17? Because I don't believe it. That is also the dullest gangway texture I've ever seen. It should really look something more like this. And where's the tight lock coupler? Huh? Jesus, maybe the features are less of a disappointment. You get a retextured cab because I CBA to model a new one, please give me money. I'm joking, but it would have been preferred. For a first, you actually get something quite new. A fully functional MyTrack traction management system, loaded with several options for you to play with. Not bad. And yes, a working GSMR! Finally! Aside from that, physics are well simulated, I think. Neutral sections work, you can change between AC and DC power, there's a coupling procedure, cold start mode is an available option, there is driver only operation, but this time you can operate the doors using the U and O keys, something I do like. Calm down, it's the same keybinds. And finally, wheel slip protection. <laughs> now, most of us train sim players have been dying for a realistic sound in Electro Star for years. The sound pack may have provided that, but it still didn't do quite enough to immerse us all. But with this new enhancement pack, should that all change? Jesus Christ! Did you hear that? W would you mind saying that again? Why is it so quiet? I I'm sure it's a lot louder in real life. Well, well, let's move on. I'm sorry, I can't hear you mate. Okay, to be honest, these sounds were recorded well, but again, too quiet. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. What is that compressor? You can barely hear it. Compare it to this. See, nice and audible. Next. Okay, the interior sounds are pretty much the only ones I can fully agree with so far. Nothing wrong here. Ow, 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 too loud, ow. I really like the power changing sounds though. But we all came here for the motors. Come on then, don't let us down. admit that the motors are okay, but it's still wrong. At the start, that was poorly transitioned. I do like how loud it gets at around 20 miles per hour, but that's just about the only thing I like. After 30 miles per hour though, it just sounds cursed. Even Sam T's sound mod has better motor sounds than this, and his pack is free and available to download from class465.weebly.com. Run sounds are not bad, except you get reminded of this train at speed. But if you compare it to the old sound pack... Any idea where the carriage rattling sounds went? Shoe clutter and track joints are taken from the Class 465 EP. And can you please record some new flan sounds for once? Horn! <coughs> Whistle! Maybe the sounds inside are a bit bit. Wait, it can't be. They use the same external motor sounds for the passenger view. Oh, come on. <laughs> COVID 19, what have you done? Yeah, yeah, 
that sounds about right. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you're meant to hear the motor still going down. Well, you know what? Yeah, 100% perfect, this is. Never mind. No, you know, just, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you know what? You're all good, mate. In conclusion, what do I think of this enhancement pack? It's okay. On the plus side, the train is still really nice to drive, and I do like all the new features. But it's not worth $60.99 at all. There were so many corners cut with this pack. The visuals, as much as I adore, the high quality textures could be better. The motor sounds were poorly recorded, and the fact they didn't bother recording the sounds from the inside just annoys me. But, you know, might be locked down, so. In comparison to Sam's Hall Electric Spot pack, there was actually a lot more effort put into the sounds on that than on this enhancement pack. Bearing again in mind, his pack is free and available from class465.wb.com Now I'm not stopping you from getting this pack. If you want to buy it, then by all means do get it. But I'm afraid that for me, this long anticipated release from AP was a total disappointment. In fact, from driving this, I could even say that the 86 pack is more worth its price, which I'll be reviewing finally in the next video. And one more point, constructive criticism is actually a good thing. It can help developers improve or fix mistakes made with their developments. This worshipping Armstrong powerhouse nonsense has to stop. They are not your gods, nor are they your saviours. So stop treating them like it. The constant arguments on their posts are just disgusting. To anyone who has been affected by stupid fanboy responses, Will you please just launch a new cat though? I'm so sorry. Why are you staring at me like that? Did I say something? Hello and welcome aboard this service to. Why are they all scrolling at once?